All right, welcome back everyone. We're gonna spend some time in the shop this afternoon. Yeah, over the past four days, the weather's been up and down like crazy. Wednesday, we were dealing with uh, running water and melting. Thursday, we were plowing uh, the driveway because of the snow. Friday, again, we were wrestling with water and uh, melting and draining. And uh, today, snowing and cold again. So it's just been up and down. We were planning to spend some time outside on the greenhouse. But uh, yeah, it's a bit too cold for that, so we're going to spend some time in the shop. This morning we uh, cleaned up the shop, getting ready for another week next week, and uh, we lined up all the tools. And uh, this afternoon we're going to spend some time doing some maintenance on the chainsaw and unboxing something that I bought for the chainsaw. And uh, we're glad that you could visit, and uh, we hope that you enjoy this video. Let's get started. And the right, and the left, and the right, and attention! All right, maggots, we have a mission that needs a few good men. Let's put your training to the test. It will be dangerous, but I'm looking for a few volunteers to step forward. Ah, good, Private DCF-887. Come with me. The rest of you, latrine duty. All right, well, two weeks ago I was at Princess Auto and I saw this on sale in their flyer for half price, which is the Power Fist Bench Mount Electric Chainsaw Sharpener. I've had my eye open for one of these for a long time. I am just horrible with the file and trying to get the chains sharp. Uh, never seems to work out for me. So I thought maybe that would be a convenient way to get my chains sharpened. So I've got it assembled, pretty simple. Quick bit of advice is uh, before you mount the motor to the base plate, it's uh, probably a good idea to put the stone in uh, before you mount it because there's no way to get it in otherwise. And uh, at least none that I know. And I didn't want to break the stone, so I took it off again and uh, put the blade in before I mounted it to the base. But there's lots of angles and depths and uh, pitches to think about and they're different for each chain. I run an Oregon chain on my uh, Husqvarna and uh, it's got all the information on the box which I've kept. So we're gonna begin to uh, figure that out. I run a Husqvarna 445 with an 18 inch blade and I've got uh, currently three chains that need to be sharpened. So we're gonna learn all about sharpening chains today. All right, well, we got all our gear laid out here. Uh, I've got an old bar that was bent and I'm using it now for eventually when the chain is sharpened to set the depth gauges or some people call them rakers. I've got my file and the little jig to do that. I've got the original box from uh, the chain itself. It's got all the critical information. It's an Oregon 95 VP and uh, that'll come into play when we look at the manual. So all the information here, the depth, the gauge, and so on and so forth, and now you can cross-reference that against the list that they have in the manual. And uh, they do have different chain brands here and uh, everything that you can find. So if you can match up your chain, I think ours is in here, right here, 95 VP. And uh, over to the right, it'll tell you all the settings to put the machine at. So uh, as it turns out, I don't need a 316 stone, I need the eighth inch stone, so I gotta change that out quickly. All right, well, we've got all of our angles set. We've got it at 30 degrees here on the vise. We've got it tilted to 10 degrees, and this will have to swing the other way when we swing this around to do the, the opposing teeth. We've got a depth gauge here, and I've got it set to just above the rest of the chain here, and uh, set the stop here and this is the uh, repeatable stop as well and this just catches the back of the tooth here so let's turn it on and uh, give it a shot Certainly feels sharp. Yeah, it's catching my fingernail pretty good there. So uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, mark this with a black felt marker so we know that's the first tooth. Uh, a couple of things that I've noticed is that there is a little bit of play left to right, so you've gotta go Make sure that when you are grinding, you just push it straight up and down, following uh, its natural path. And uh, this chain here, you have to make sure that this is firmly in place. It sometimes grabs the other links, 
and doesn't grab this and this can go loose. So you have to make sure. So let's move it to the next tooth and try it. So we unloosen it, we pull it two tooth, two teeth. Pull back to set it. Okay, that tooth is in there. And it's as simple as that. So uh, that was pretty quick. Uh, so we have a uh, 72 tooth, so that's uh, 36 that I did there. And that goes pretty quick. And uh, so now we have to change the angle to do the opposing grind. And uh, so we'll uh, loosen this off. We'll switch this to 30 degrees the other way. And and the 10 degrees the other way. All right, well, that uh, is one chain down. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on the saw and quickly go out to the forest and uh, see if it made a huge difference. Uh, overall impressions, yeah, not too bad. It certainly is a quick way to sharpen your uh, chain. There are a couple of things that uh, I would have expected to be a little bit better and just the solidness of the machine is overall pretty good, but uh, like I say, there's a bit of left and right wiggle that could affect how the, the stone hits the chain. Got to remember to keep all your things tight and uh, takes a bit to set up but overall quite happy with this. This is going to certainly help uh, keeping my chain sharp. So I got to flatten the uh, depth gauges yet and then we'll put it on the saw and quickly head out to the forest. All right, well, that's one chain down, two to go. Overall impressions are uh, pretty good on the machine. 
uh, certainly going to speed up chain sharpening, that's for sure. A couple of things that uh, I would have thought would have been a bit better, but uh, uh, you can work around it, is this unit here has a little bit of left and right play, which will affect how you grind your tooth. Uh, you got to be a little bit careful on uh, bringing the tooth or the grindstone down to the tooth so that it comes in straight down. And uh, there seems to be a little bit to run out on the spindle itself. I tried to adjust the stone as best as possible, but it uh, seems to be run out on the spindle. So that could be a bit better, but uh, overall I think it uh, works pretty nice and uh, quite happy with the purchase. Alright, well the unit comes with some extra pieces here. Uh, two extra stones, one is a quarter inch, one is three sixteenths. We had to change out the three sixteenths to the one eighth, which is in the machine right now, which is what the manual called for, for the type of chain that I have. Two Allen keys, one for the arbor, one for the shield, and a dressing stone for when the stone wears out, you can dress your stone uh, up a bit so that you can keep on using it, and a measuring gauge. Uh, don't know what that's for, there's no mention of it in the manual, so uh, yeah, we'll have to learn what that's about too. But uh, those are the extra items that come with the unit. All right, well that concludes today's video. Uh, we got the Power Fist bench mount uh, electric chainsaw sharpener all up and running. I'm sure there's going to be a learning curve yet with that, but uh, we'll learn as we go. We're going to try out the first chain out in the forest, see if it uh, made any difference at all. And uh, no, overall impressions, uh, quite happy with it. And I got to buy another tool, which is always a nice thing. So uh, we're glad that you could join us and we hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, we would love it if you would subscribe, like and share. And join us again for ongoing videos on the property. Thanks for watching.